guys welcome back to my channel tomatoes puppies and everything gardening i'm heather and today's video is basically going to be a follow-up to one of my latest videos that was basically decluttering in the attic um specifically the episode or the last um video related to the attic where i talk about um, my clutter epiphany so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, um, where I'm at with the attic, um, how that epiphany kind of affected my process going forward, um, which has been pretty uh, revolutionary <laughs> for me. Um, so that's what today's about. I've got my cocoa coffee mix here, and I thought it's a horribly beautiful rainy day, days like this, I like to reflect. How about I just have like a coffee chat slash vlog update um, with you guys. So if you can join me after I talk here a little bit, I do have some video I want to share with you from my progress in the attic. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and um, happy with some of the stuff I've been willing to let go of. Um, so I wouldn't say for those who've not watched the other videos, um, basically what I'm wanting to accomplish right now, this past several weeks has been to kind of declutter our home so that we can get it ready uh, to make it marketable to sell so that we can uh, relocate and move somewhere where we have less restrictions on um, like gardening and, and things like that. So I have to pause because Tonto wants a dog treat. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, dogs are kind of like toddlers and kids. You know, you get on the phone and they uh, want attention. So Tonto kind of knows that, hey, mom is sitting down to do a video and just have some quiet time. So he is going to keep asking for treats. So <clears throat> I brought a buddy biscuit over here just in case. So I can just hand that to him. So yeah, we want to move. Um, and I have this vision in my head of where I want to move. I don't know like physically where it is, but mentally I can see it. I want to be down like a gravel road and many acres. I don't want to see cars losing, you know, to and from the road ahead. I don't want to be off the main road at all. Uh, that's a big <clears throat> item on my list. And um, I'm pretty flexible about everything else. I mean, my husband does have a few requirements. Like he does want a garage, um, doesn't want to live near uh, a big body of water because of like algae growth. We kind of live somewhat close to water right now. We do get a lot of algae growth and then there's mold issues and damp issues. So, um, you know, it's things like that. But um, a house came up the other day and it's not perfect, and I don't think we'll go look at it, but it was almost perfect, and it made me really kind of yearn for that, and like, I really I really want to get this house here that we're living in now done, settled, you know, so that at the drop of a hat, you know, if we see something, we can just look at it, maybe put an offer on it, if it's just like, you know, our dream place. But our house currently is not like that. So the last few weeks or so, I have been working on a, a speedy version of trying to declutter and get the house ready. So I have been doing little things over the last year and a half, and I have made progress, but it's been super slow. And so now I'm kind of like really pushing myself um, just to declutter, get things ready. And that is what I have been making a few videos about the last few weeks is that process. Um, how did I get into the state of having so much clutter? Well, you know, um, the prior two homes we lived in before this house, I really didn't have any clutter issues. It's just really in the last, um, you know, five plus years, six, five to eight, ten years, that it has been like a snowball and it's been like, in reflecting on it, I think it's because it's been like a perfect storm. It's just been a perfect storm of situations. Um, you know, we downsized our square footage almost a half 
and we moved to a home that was older with very little storage, uh, very little storage options. And then also we just got busy with life. You know, we moved here with four children. The youngest three were under five. And then as they started entering the school system, things just kind of just sped up so quickly. Um, you know, the month before the pandemic happened and everything shut down, like I was in my car three to four hours a day between mm -hmm. school drop-offs, school pickups, after school drop-offs, after school pickups, you know, band trips, um, soccer. It was just a lot. It was really high pressure. And, um, you know, we lived like that for years. You know, there were weeks um, when my husband used to have to work a lot of overtime where I had three kids having soccer almost at the exact same time. And I was having to hustle for rides and like bargain, <laughs> you know, hey, can you get my kid? I'll get your kid for this and that. Um, it was just a lot of stress and a lot of busyness. And the weekends were devoted to band and soccer games, lots of soccer games. So a lot of things got neglected and, you know, decluttering wasn't even thought of. It was just, you know, if we do a quick cleanup, we put everything in a box or a bag and stuff it in the attic. And that is how my attic got to be almost unwalkable. I mean, it was unwalkable a few different times. I have decluttered that attic like three times in the last year and a half. Um, and I have purged so much. Um, and I talk about that in the prior videos, but um, yeah, so we were just living this busy life in a smaller home with less storage space. And that is some of the par perfect storm elements, but I think there are a couple other things emotionally that kind of went into the clutter issue. And it was, I've lost many close relatives in the last four to five years. And I think that triggers something for a lot of people. And I am naturally very emotional, naturally very sentimental. So I think seeing the years going by, my kids getting older, myself getting older, and then losing all these people, um, so many people have been just taken in the last four to five years and that has been really rough for me and I think it's harder to let go now because I'll see something and I'll think you know like a Christmas card what if this is the last time I ever have this person's handwriting because they pass away in the future um, you know, and it's, you know, I have loved having little children, love being a mom, love that season of my life. And now that my children are, are getting older, it's hard to let go of all those cute little, you know, baby toys and activities and board books and, um, and the stuff we never got around to doing because we were living such a busy life. You know, I have activities that are still in the box that I had these great intentions for. We never did them, and now they're they're literally literally too old to do those activities. So it's just hard to let go of everything when you know there's always potential for loss coming. You never know when that loss is going to happen. You don't know who it's going to happen to, when it's going to happen. And I think that filters into this process of hanging on to stuff. So that is my perfect storm. All of those elements have come together, you know, in the last 10 to 15 years of this busy life and made for just a lot of stuff. But I've had those epiphanies, you know, um, in this video, I'm going to share one that happens as I'm recording. Um, and it was really powerful to me. And it kind of goes along with the epiphany from the last episode when I was up in the attic. And I talked to you about um, that little storage case. And I had carried it throughout my life for the last 35 or so years. I was carrying something with me through all these moves throughout my decades of life that really made me sad and I didn't feel happy to see it I felt just 
maybe shame, maybe guilt, maybe sadness, just all a, a bundle of negative emotions. So I did let that go. And you'll see that in this episode where I take a big load to the goodwill, but um, I let it go. And that was my like matrix moment. I felt like Neo in the matrix. I finally accepted what I want to do from this moment going forward and what I want to believe and what I want to accomplish and do. And I, as soon as I just made that decision of letting something go that had made me feel bad and sad, it really opened up my thought process for letting go of other things. And um, so that was a really cool moment. And I've been applying that the last week or so since that episode um, to other things that I come across. You know, and I ask myself, what does this make me feel like? Does this make me feel guilt? Because say it's a, a board game we never opened and it was for eight to 10 year olds and now my kids are past that point. If it's making me feel guilt, let it go. Um, there's a broken gnome out on the deck. Um, I bought it for my husband last Valentine's Day and he didn't like it. He was disappointed. I don't think he really liked it. So then that kind of had a negative emotion attached to it. So once it, it got broken, I'm debating should I super glue it back together or just let it go? But I'm thinking, why not just let it go? Because there's really no happiness attached to it. It's cute and it's adorable and you could super glue it back together, but it's got this little tag of emotion, bad emotion to it. So let's just let it go, let it go. So I've been doing that. I've just been letting go and um, it's felt pretty good. It is still a struggle and I do have all these conversations in my head and it always kind of veers back to the what if, what if this is the last you know, um, picture of this person or what if this is the last gift this person sent me. It's, it's tied up with all that emotional loss and potential loss. Um, but I'm proud of the progress I've been making. We did go look at my husband and I, cause he's on board, you know, he's been wanting me to declutter for a few years. Um, he's on board with moving too. So we went and looked at storage units and that's just Tonto rummaging through his toy box. Um, we were shocked. I was shocked at the price. And I wanted just a drive up storage unit where I could just drive up with my minivan and just unload it. Well, they're expensive and they're not climate controlled either. And then we went to another place that had like a multi level storage unit. You had to take like an elevator. And I'm thinking that is just too much for me. I won't do it. I'll just not go. I'll let the stuff pile up and I'll go. So I don't think we're going to do that. I think I'm just going to encourage myself to purge more and more. And it is, you know, it's that ongoing conversation in my head, um, kind of talking myself out of keeping something and why I shouldn't, why it's not a good idea. Um, you'll see in this video, I decided, well, Actually, in the video, I hadn't decided. I, I filmed this a few days ago. Um, it was actually like a, a night or two after filming, and I was just thinking about the dollhouse. You'll see the dollhouse up in the attic. And it's cute, it's beautiful, it's a nice little dollhouse. But by the time my daughters um, start having children, and their children are actually old enough to play with Barbie dolls, that dollhouse will probably be dry rotted or molded or falling apart. I mean, why would I keep something for like 20 years when I could just donate it now or sell it now to some child um, and make someone happy? And you'll also see in the video, I decided to get rid of Tonto's first kennel it was a solid wood, beautiful furniture kennel. It looked like a coffee table, well, not a coffee table, a side table. Well, he hated the crate and he chewed the bars and he scratched up the floor and he broke the door off. Needless to say, we gave up on crate training when he was four months old. I tried every night from the night we brought him home until he was four months old to crate training and it was impossible. I had to lay beside his crate and sing to him hold his hand through the crate bar 
and he still would not sleep. He was just miserable. Finally, I just let him sleep in whatever room I'm in, wherever I'm at, he sleeps right beside my bed. Um, and that's how it's been since then. And we totally gave up the crate. So we haven't used it since he was four months old, but it was damaged. And I put it on the freeboard and some lady immediately, she was like, please, can I have this? And we started messaging with private message through Facebook. Um, and she told me she had a senior dog, but she had a lot of dogs. Time check here. One more biscuit. One more. Anyways, um, I had to give him the last bitty biscuit. He is in a rare mood today. Um, anyways, her dog was a senior living in a mesh pop-up crate, and it was just for his coziness. It wasn't for containment. So she said that would be absolutely perfect for him. It'll be such an upgrade. Um, so she came and picked it up. She sent me a picture later of her dog, so happy in this crate. And now he's got this nice little cozy den. Um, so I feel really good about that. I love getting rid of stuff if I know it's directly helping someone, benefiting someone. I love to help people that way. Um, so I would probably get rid of everything if I knew I could make a direct happy donation like that. So I'm hoping with the dollhouse, it'll be a similar situation. So I am letting go of things. Um, I feel like I have been rambling so much, but it feels so good. I don't know if you can get anything out of me pouring all this out to you, but um, thank you. Thank you for letting me voice this. And um, I'm such a quiet person. I'm a very introverted person. So it takes me a long time to open up to people, but I feel, I feel comfortable sharing like this. I feel like I am sharing and I feel like someone is listening to me. So thank you. It would be really hard for me to do this in person, especially talking this long without switching over and, and you know, kind of talking to the person about what's going on with themselves. So thank you for listening so much. Um, there is a power in sharing and uh, I do believe there there can be a connection just through this format like even if there's a time lapse between the time I record it and the time someone uh, listens or views it you know there's still that connection just like when a writer writes a book and then a reader picks it up you know one two ten years later they can still make that connection to the message um, so I think, I think we're going to get started with the filming of the attic here, but I want to add one thing about the moment where I had this big epiphany, and I hope if I share this with you, you can apply it if you're struggling as well with letting go. So, you know, my kids have had lots of Legos over the years, even my girls, they went through a huge Lego phase, and so I had all these Lego boxes up in the attic, like ton of Lego boxes and inside of those Lego boxes were the booklets like I had probably 30 40 instruction booklets or more um, I brought all that down from the attic and I had it out here on the back deck and I was breaking everything down for the recycling and I just had this moment of it was giving me a lot of anxiety to do this because my original plan my original thought process when I saved all these books and booklets um, not books and booklets, boxes, the original boxes and the original instructions. I was someday, like now, when my kids are done with Legos, I was going to take apart the built Lego sets, put them back in the proper boxes with the proper instructions and all the proper pieces, like at all the pieces that it's supposed to go with that set. And to hear me say that, and when I was saying that on the video that I recorded the other day, I had this epiphany of that is the most ridiculous thing ever. There is, that would be so difficult to do. I mean, could you imagine trying to locate every single Lego? I mean, because I have bins of Legos, uh, you know, not all of the sets are complete. The pieces have broken off over the years. What a horrible difficult job I was putting ahead of myself and the way my mind works I would need to complete that 
job before I could go do certain other decluttering jobs or packing away jobs. Um, so I had that epiphany moment where I'm like, Heather, you have to make a choice. You can either choose control or peace. And you're going to do it right now because the recycling is coming tomorrow. And I just took a deep breath and I said to myself, I'm going to choose peace because if I continue with this control, and that's what that was, I was trying to control how those toys were saved, how those toys and the boxes and the instructions were kept. I was trying to control it in the way I thought was best but it was almost an impossible feat. And, and I don't have any desire to do that. I don't wanna go through those Legos. I don't wanna box things up. I don't want to have to store all this stuff. So I just made that moment. You choose peace or you choose clutter slash control. The clutter is control. So I just have to learn to let go. And um, it is a process and I do have to talk myself through it but I really feel like I have made some emotional epiphanies in the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, I just keep saying to myself, it's either peace or control. It's either peace or the clutter. So that's what I'm doing. And I have been throwing stuff in my donation bin left and right. Um, after this video, probably in the next four or five days, I'm going to have another video where I am tackling another area of our house that's a hot spot, which is our kind of like our playroom. We used to call it the playroom, but it is like a collection zone now. And especially one corner, it's a hot spot. It's like the kids go clean their room and they just dump stuff there. Um, so I've been going through some of that stuff and it has been surprisingly easy. And I'm really proud of myself. So let's just get started with the video because I have talked for, I think, 22 minutes. I'm so sorry. Um, my voice is even getting kind of tired of talking. I don't normally talk this much. Uh, it wasn't setting, you know, sitting. Um, so yeah, let's just get started with the video because I am going to have to voice over a few parts of that as well. Um, but I think you'll find it eye-opening, and if you're struggling like me, just know that you can do it too. You just kind of have to make uh, those connections and kind of the realization of why. I think that's a big thing, like why am I holding on to this, um, and then talk yourself through it. Um, all right, so let's get started, guys. Guys, I am heading up to Goodwill. I'm going to drop off a bunch of this stuff. I did find a few more bags of clothing and um, I don't even know what, what's in the bags. So this causes a lot of anxiety to me just to take a bag. But I know these are some of my son's and daughter's outgrown stuff or stuff that didn't fit on. I mean, these are mini Bowden jeans. I could probably sell those, but I'm not. I'm just going to hold my breath, try to work through it mentally and just drop it all off. This will not be my last load. Um, I am having extreme anxiety though um, with not going through the bags. But I need to empty out my van so that I can go deliver cardboard tomorrow. I'm just going to work through it. Okay, so the recycling truck comes tomorrow morning and I'm on a mad dash to drag every box out of the attic I can find and figure out what in the heck and get them processed, broken down, either cut for garden material if they're plain cardboard or just broken down. Originally I've been saving all the Lego boxes and the instructions thinking that someday we might need those instructions again and someday we might want to take the Legos apart and actually put them back in the box. <laughs> I don't think that's realistic. So I am going to actually break down all the boxes, get rid of the instructions, and just put all the Legos into one giant space, one giant container. I'm not gonna leave them divided in separate containers like they are now. And that is a huge step for me and a breakthrough. So we'll see. I can see why I never got rid of this box. 
it is actually a house. A cute little house one of my daughters made. Isn't that adorable? I miss those years. But since I'm taking a video and I'm going to take a picture, I'm going to let it go. Unless, Jeffrey, come here, Jeffrey. Do you want to have a house? Well, I guess Jeffrey doesn't want it, so it can go to recycling. So Jeffrey loves the house, but I am going to take it to the recycling. You going to get in? So this is where I was making the decision to let go of the dog crate slash kennel and also the dollhouse. Um, so I talk about that in the intro to this video and I did make the decision to let go of the crate and it ended up at a perfect home with the perfect dog so I feel so good about that <laughs> I did like damage my thighs trying to get this down the stairs from the attic and it was a big mess but you can see I left a bunch of stuff out for the recycling man I'm sure they were so mad at me and here's the crate right before it went off to its new owner